video introduces the new quality assurance checks in the RBT scavenger database. So this is the uh, scavenger database I've got open here and uh, originally this database is meant to consume the results from multiple RBT runs into one database. So the tables here mostly represent the structure of the XML tags in the RBT results. So what you can do is um, down here I have a bunch of RBT runs that I've run using the latest version and you can see the result file that's been consumed and over to the right you get um, all of the visit level uh, metrics out of the RBT results and then uh, all the tables kind of hinge off of this visit ID column so if you want to get uh, the channel units uh, based off the visit ID and the unit number you can get all of the metrics for all the channel units and those are rolled up into channel unit summary etc uh, etc et so to extend this to work with quality assurance what we've done is um, we've given the possibility of actually putting in here other types of RBT results so here are a bunch of uh, uh, results for manually ca calculated metrics so basically you've gone to a handful of sites and um, manually, uh, Carol Volk, Gene, and Kelly have manually calculated the uh, metric values for these visits and put them into the same kind of database structure. So the values are in here for all these metrics. And uh, we've also got some historical uh, RBT metrics in here too. So for last year's RBT, we've gone and got the results um, off of Champ Monitoring, uh, actually and put them into this database. So we've basically got three types of uh, RBT results um, in this scavenger database and what we want to be able to do is to compare them together. Now before we compare them we want to reformat them into the champ monitoring format. So in uh, the database there's a whole bunch of queries. Uh, the only one you really need to be concerned with is this query champ metrics and what it does is uh, flatten all of those metric values into a single table and so for each of those visits uh, we now have all of the champ metrics in one table and they're using the same um, they're using the same field names as uh, would appear on champ monitoring so Thauer depth profile mean and integrated bankful width uh, these ID columns do appear throughout the data set and uh, they can be ignored. They're basically a re uh, reproduction of the visit ID. Um, so here is a standard deviation of the detrended DEM. Okay? So this one table is extremely useful and if you want to compare um, what the RBT is doing directly against CHAM, and this is uh, something Sitka will want to do, is you can run the RBT a bunch of times, scavenge the results into this database, then open this query, and you will uh, be able to see uh, by site, year, and crew, uh, we, we use this as the visit name, you'll be able to see uh, the champ metrics exactly as they should be on champ monitoring. So you can compare, compare column by column against champ monitoring. Um, okay, now for the purposes of the RBT what we can do is we can uh, take any two of these visits and we can compare them uh, in this database so what we might want to do here is take uh, this particular uh, visit which is um, in the John Day at this uh, site ending in 5 and we have a manual calculation for it what we might want to do is compare it against uh, this visit here which is a, an RBT run using the latest RBT of the same uh, site and so we've set up a, um, a mechanism for doing that in this database uh, what you can do is we have this comparisons table which is basically a pairwise list of visits that we're going to compare and you can turn on or off which visit so you can set up multiple pairs but only compare actively compare one or two of them. So um, you get from this drop down you can pick and in, in the drop down is the visit ID um, it's the scavenger visit ID, the uh, field season, the site, the 
accrued and what type of scavenge result it is, whether it's manual calculation or a historical RBT run or a uh, current RBT run. Okay, so you can pick uh, these pairs, and then once um, once you set up your pairs, what you can do is on the uh, form that opens with the database, this uh, startup form, you can hit the QA check button, and the QA check will go and look through all of the metrics and update this table based on um, which uh, metrics fall within the threshold. So um, what I'll do here is I will take here is a pair of, here is a pair of visits that I just analyzed and I can expand with the little uh, checkbox. I'll just refresh the records to make sure I've got the latest data and you'll see that I have no exceptions. So with this pair of visits, I just got one exception. The bank full width profile filtered mean was 58 in the first run, which was a historical RBT run, and it's now 66 with the current RBT run. So that's a difference of 13%. Now you might ask where are these thresholds coming from? There's also a table in here called com comparison metrics. And this is a list of every uh, champ metric that this database is able of it capable of analyzing and a threshold for which uh, they will be if the difference between the two visits exceeds this threshold it will be considered an exception. So you see I'm turn I've turned on certain metrics and they were part of my analysis. So as I as I expand down this list, uh, two exceptions for this pair of visits and then a lot of exceptions for this pair of visits. And you'll see that the site weighted area was about 32% uh, different. And I suspect that this is because there were multiple wetted area polygons in this um, in the data set. And that the manual calculation got the right number, but the RBT picked the wrong polygon in the data set because there was only expecting one and it's analyzed the wrong polygon. So um, this is the QA tool uh, for the RBT.